Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I want to talk about the lessons we learn. The lessons we learn when we specifically um, look at the 2023 Disney Marvel, uh, the Marvel's blockbuster film with Brie Larson and Iman Vellani and Teona Paris. Right, uh, with director asterisk question mark uh, Nia da Costa. So today, what I want to do is I want to look at Dungeons and Dragons campaigns that are abandoned in the middle uh, because of the loss of a critical player, because of because of because of the loss of the dungeon, because of the loss of the dungeon master. It's a good yeah. So let's let's leave it because of the loss of the dungeon master. Now, what would that have to do with the Marvels, right? Well, uh, actually, I listened to the best uh, reviewer in the world. Her name is uh, Grace Randolph, and she's absolutely brilliant. She does incredible coverage of Hollywood. And one of the things that she does that I just think is absolutely brilliant, that I really love, is um, she actually... Um, yeah, that that I that I really think is fantastic is she covers the meta of of these films. Now, actually, just so you're aware, the 2023 Disney the Marvels blockbuster, part of the MCU film, uh, starring Brie Larson, starring Amon Vellani, starring Teona Paris, is actually a historical film. There was a lot of pressure on that film, and it is the number one MCU film in history, to my knowledge. Looking at the patterns that I've seen. No MCU movie has ha, has sparked more hatred, more vitriol, more frustration, more consternation before it even hit the screen. It had made enemies deep, deep, like for, for well over a year, maybe close to two years, people were, were act, actively rooting for this movie to fail. First of all, I'm sorry, uh, spoilers for the 2023 uh, The Marvels film. And I have seen it. It's a four out of five star movie. It is not the feminist scree that people are saying, that many people on the internet are saying it is. Uh, it is very feminist. Um, and it is very girl power. And I, actually, there is one, there are two strong male male characters. One of them that I, I don't even know the name of, but it was still, his presence on the screen was very interesting and I and I'm interested in looking him up and seeing who exactly what the actor was and what his character was but um, Samuel Jackson playing Nick Fury was right there so anybody who says there aren't strong male leads in this film they're just lying like there is definitely strong male leads in this film Samuel Jackson is the, the definition of a strong male lead he is definitely in the film and so it's not all girl and it's not all girl power right and why would hey, hey Scott why can't an MCU movie be all girl power because it's a blockbuster, right? And 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 like, if you want to make, uh, you know, a super tiny, super feminist movie that's just for women, you could do that. That's what Hart House films are for, right? Like, you know, so, and I, you know, and I agree with Grace Randolph. I think you know, there's Hollywood activists now, and there's Hollywood actors. And what happened with 2023 Marvel uh, is that you had a Hollywood activist who refused to be a Hollywood actor, right? And Brie Larson. Like, she was a pre-active foundation destroyer. She was using a jackhammer to destroy the foundation of this film far before it ever arrived, right? Like, and that, and that, and if you're going to be in a blockbuster film, right, you should be promoting the movie rather than insulting the base of the movie, right? But the real problem here is, so this was this film that was coming forward, and basically there was a lot on the line for feminism, right? Feminism was like, hey, we could do a strong, you know, a strong blockbuster film, Right? But the reality is there were problems right from the gate. There were massive problems from the gate. And one of them that was what Grace Randolph reported was that Nia DaCosta actually deserted the film in the middle of shooting, right? Like six months before it wrapped, Nia DaCosta literally just left set, did not talk to, to Disney, and just deserted the film. And it had to be it had to be finished by other by other resources in Disney. And so, and that's huge. That's a huge problem because Nia DaCosta was an up-and-coming female director. And the point of this was Disney was like, "Hey, we want to give female directors a chance too." But then Nia DaCosta deserted the production in the middle, which the entire point of this movie was to show girl power. But you're giving you know leadership to you know a woman, 
and then she's abandoning that leadership and leaving her entire team in the lurch, right? That's bad, right? Now, what's interesting is I I watched this movie, right? Four out of five star movie. It's a good movie. Could have been a great movie if Nia DaCosta had stayed where she was and finished the job she was hired to do, in my humble opinion, right? Um, and, and I'm basing that off of what Grace Randolph said, that, that she really just deserved. She was a deserter director, right? Said, uh, specifically, Grace said that she left the set in the middle of, in the middle of shooting, right, and did not come back and went and shot another movie, right, which is like, uh, that's really bad, right? Like, And especially when this was supposed to be a showpiece for what a girl power movie could do, right? And so this is very problematic, right? Now, what did Disney do? They finished it. They finished it rock solid, baby. They're like, thanks, Nia DaCosta. We gave you a huge opportunity. You blew it, right? You you think Candyman is your resume? I don't think so, right? We gave you the chance to, to actually do an incredible job on this film. And... This isn't the first time Marvel's tried to do this. They've been trying to turn over movies to a powerful, solid, productive female director, and they've had significant trouble doing it, right? Like, and the reason, so Nia DaCosta, this was a night, this turned out to be a nightmare for them, right? She deserted she desert her director, in my humble opinion. That's the correct title for her on, for Nia DaCosta on this film. And then also, the director of Selma was invited to direct Black Panther and was like, no, I got better things to do. Did you? Like, uh, I don't think so. Like, that was a billion-dollar, huge, huge, uh, you know, Ryan Coogler, 100% delivered. And and Grace has been openly dis- openly saying this, like, that the studios are coming around and saying, we're going to give um, female directors a chance, and the female directors are not delivering, right, specifically for Marvel, right? So this was a very bad outing for female-led projects, right? Doesn't mean every female-led project will will fail, but it definitely, this doesn't help. Like, basically, when people are like, why don't you give female directors a a chance? You know, there's there's some evidence on the ground, like, at this point, if you're not Greta Gerwig, you're not delivering, right? And And that has to be managed on the female side. They need to have, on the woman side, they need to have, the women need to get together and say, if this happens, and you're a woman director, reach out. We will support you as a gender, right? Like this has got to get fixed going forward. So, but Disney handled this. They brought in, they, they're like, are you kidding, man? We've been plunking these. We got like 30 movies in the MCU, right? Like, and the reality, maybe 20, maybe like 25, about 20, 20, 25, 30 movies now easily, right? In the MCU, in, in the modern MCU. And so they just brought in their own people and they wrapped it up and they fixed every problem that Nia DaCosta solved them, right? Now, what's interesting, and they did that because they had the right to finish the story. Let's talk about Dungeons and Dragons, okay? What is our lesson from this? Well, one, we need to be, uh, if you're a player and you get a deserter dungeon master, you need to be ready to finish that story yourself, okay? Now, how do you do that? And do you have the right to do that? First of all, if your dungeon master uh, deserts you in the middle of a campaign, and what is a desertion, right? One, one month without communication. If you don't hear from, if you don't hear the next time and date the game will be held, right, uh, within one month, that is a desertion, in my humble opinion. And you, and all rights to the story revert to you, the players. Okay, so, so basically, uh, at this point, so. Uh, so one, that's no communication, right? So like, let's say three weeks go by and the dungeon master says, hey, I'm sorry, we haven't met in three weeks. Uh, in two months, we're going to meet, right? And we're going to meet at this time in this place. If they don't say a time and a place, it's like a, it's like an engagement without a ring and a date. Doesn't, doesn't count, right? If they say in two months on this day at this location, we will meet and we'll run the next session, then, you, then the dungeon master still has rights to that story. Right, and you can't go telling your own story without the dungeon master. Okay, what happens if uh, if you get to this point and yeah, what happens if you reach that point and um, oh, and and here's the other one, or if you do not play a session for three months, right? Let's say that the games are ske- are scheduled but canceled, right? If you don't have play for three months on a campaign, 
then that campaign is over and all rights to the story, in my humble opinion, revert to the players. Now, what can the players do with that story? None of the players can run it as a dungeon master, right? And the reason why is that was started by another dungeon master, right? And generally right now, um, players do not have the skills to, to dungeon master on their own. If you're not an established dungeon master who is playing, and actually, even if you're an established dungeon master, it's not, you didn't start that campaign. You don't have the ability to continue that game campaign by picking it up and continuing to dungeon master it, right? It's just a bad idea. So what can the players do to finish the story? Well, what I think the best option is, is that all the players meet and they say, we're going to write the end of this story, right? We're going to rat, we're going to give a, uh, a applicable ending for each one of our player characters. And the reason why they would do that is their player characters are due an end to that quest, even though they have been near decosted, right? And they and there is there's a deserter dungeon master, right? So if you are a player and you've been near decosted, right, what you should do is gather all the players together and say, one of us has the right to finish this story. And so let's elect our uh, our story staker. Right, somebody to stake the story down and finish it, right? So the story staker is elected by the, all the players. And then at that point, that player says, hey, what would you like to happen for your player character to end this campaign? And that, that story staker, that player, gathers all the desires of each of the players and then finally writes, a, writes an, a, an end to the story that is one page long that is as long as one page per session that was played, right? So if like seven sessions was played, then the story will be seven, the story can be up to seven pages long. The story take, sticker writes that story and writes a, a and writes an ending for every single player character and then distributes that to the group. And then just out of spite, they send it off to the dungeon master as well. Uh, and actually not just for spite, there's some spite in it, but uh, also to tell the dungeon master, you suck, you should have finished this, because you did accosted us, this is how we finished it, right? And um, and that's necessary, right? Because that that um, that dungeon master may get their crap together at some point and actually go, get back to the table, right? And actually, you shouldn't run with them, but they may go with another group, right? And I think it would be good if they do go with another group. If, if you need a cost a group, don't ever try to go back to it. That's They should not trust you, right? But another group can give you a new chance, right? I do think that is okay, right? So basically, um, so the story staker would write the story and then distribute it to all players, right? And that may mean that some players are not super happy with what was actually established, um, you know, for, for the story, but that's okay. Uh, and the reason, you know... Uh, and the story staker should do a good job to make each player character have a good ending. So if you get Nia DaCosta in your Dungeons and Dragons game, if you have a deserter dungeon master, that is how players handle a deserter dungeon master, in my humble opinion. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion. When you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.